This is an article from 2013. In the coming days, the United States Supreme Court is expected to rule in the potentially landmark case on the constitutionality of affirmative action. The original lawsuit was filed on behalf of Abigail Fisher, a woman who claims that she was denied admission to the University of Texas because she is white. But study after study shows that affirmative action helps white women as much or even more than it helps men and women of color. Ironically, Fisher is exactly the kind of person affirmative action helps the most in America today. Originally, women weren't even included in legislation attempting to level the playing field in education and employment. The first affirmative action measure in America was an executive order signed by President Kennedy in 1961, requiring that federal contractors, quote, take affirmative action to ensure that applicants are employed and employees are treated during employment without regard to their race, creed, color, and national origin. In 1967, President Johnson amended this and subsequent measures included sex, recognizing that women also face many discriminatory barriers and hurdles to equal opportunity. Meanwhile, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 only included sex in the list of prohibited forms of discrimination because conservative opponents of the legislation hoped that including it would sway moderate members of Congress to withdraw their support for the bill. Still, in a nation where white women and black people were once considered property, not allowed to own property themselves, and not allowed to vote, it was clear to all those who were seeking fairness and opportunity that both groups face monumental obstacles. White people of color, individually and as a group, have been helped by affirmative action in the subsequent years. Data and studies suggest women, white women in particular, have been benefiting disproportionately from affirmative action. According to one study back in 1995, six million women, the majority of whom were white, had jobs they wouldn't have had otherwise held but for affirmative action. Another study shows that women made great gains in employment at companies that do business with the federal government, which are therefore subjected to federal affirmative action requirements than in other companies. With female employment rising 15.2% at federal contractors, but only 2.2% elsewhere. And the women working for federal contracting companies also held higher positions and were paid better. Even in the private sector, the advancements of white women eclipses those of people of color. After IBM established its own affirmative action program, the numbers of women in management positions more than tripled in less than 10 years. Data from subsequent years shows that the number of executives of color at IBM also grew, but not nearly at the same rate. Success of white women make a case not for abandoning affirmative action, but for continuing it. As the number in the Senate and the Fortune 500 shows, women still face barriers to equal participation in leadership roles, of course. The case for continuing affirmative action for people of color is even greater. The median wealth of white households is 20 times that of black households. Searches found that the same resume for the same job applications will get twice as many callbacks for interviews if the name on the resume is Greg instead of Jamal. School districts spend more on predominantly white schools than predominantly black schools. The fact that black workers earn on average 35% less than white workers in the same job isn't erased by election of an African-American president one who, by the way, openly praised the role of affirmative action in his life and accomplishments. As for Fisher, there is ample evidence that she just wasn't qualified to get into the University of Texas. After all, her grades weren't that great. And the year she applied for the university, admissions there were actually more competitive than Harvard's. In its court filings, the university has pointed out that even if Fisher received a point for race, she still wouldn't have met the threshold for admissions. Yes, it is true that in the same year, the University of Texas made exceptions and admitted some students with lower grades and test scores than Fisher. Five of those students were black or Latino. 42 were white. 
The United States Supreme Court ruled today, on June 29th of 2023, that considering race as a factor in college admissions process is unconstitutional. In a six to three decision along ideological lines, the justice ruled that the admissions process at Harvard University and the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill violated the Equal Protections Clause. Quote, many universities have for far too long wrongly concluded that the touchstone of an individual's identity is not challenge bested, skills built, or lessons learned, but the color of their skin. This nation's constitutional history does not tolerate that choice. And that was stated by Chief Justice John Roberts. In one case, Harvard University was accused of discrimination against Asian Americans in its administration process, while in another, the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill was accused of giving preference to Black, Hispanic, and Native American applicants over white and Asian applicants. Both cases were filed by students for fair omissions led by Edward Blum, a conservative activist who was best known for his efforts to challenge affirmative action policies. Quote, we have permitted race-based administration only within the confines of narrow restrictions. University programs must comply with strict scrutiny. They may never use race as a stereotype or negative, and at some point, they must end. Respondents, administration systems, however, well-intentioned and implemented in good faith, fail each of these criteria. The court determined that using race as a factor in college administration necessarily and unconstitutionally hurts some races and helps others. Quote, college omissions are zero sum, a benefit provided to some applicants but not to others necessarily advantages the former group at the expense of the latter. The decision is broadly in line with America's view on race-based affirmative action. A Pew Research Center poll published on June 8th found half of American adults disapprove of elite colleges and universities considering an applicant's race or ethnicity when making administration decisions. The Supreme Court stated that colleges can still consider race obliquely. Quote, nothing in this opinion should be construed as prohibiting universities from considering an applicant's discussion of how race affected his or her life, be it through discrimination, inspiration, or otherwise. Still, the decision, it marks a dramatic change in higher education in the United States colleges and universities will have to come up with new ways to recruit diverse student bodies. And it remains to be seen how the decision will affect the economy and society more broadly. If college campuses become less diverse and fewer minority college graduates could enter the job market, quote, the devastating impact of this decision cannot be overstated. The majority's vision of race neutrality will entrench racial segregation in higher education because racial inequality will persist so long as it is ignored. And that was stated by Justice Sonia Sotomayor. So for the longest time, the main conversation that has taken place is that, oh, affirmative action is such a negative thing. Uh, affirmative action is only for uh, black people and how affirmative action is so wrong. And it's only one group that can benefit from this affirmative action. Affirmative action is used as a crutch uh, for black people should be this and black. Right. That was the main face that they used in order to demonize and in order to um, say something negative or deem affirmative action as a negative. But realistically, the main people, the overwhelming majority that were able and that have been benefiting from affirmative action have been white women. That That is not just hearsay. That is a fact. And no matter how much people want to spout otherwise, the fact of the matter, along with a lot of other rulings that have taken place in the United States of America that has had to do with women, it has always been about white women. Everybody else that is a woman of a different nationality, color, creed, religion, whatever it is, they're, they're not even their second, third, fourth, fifth thought. The ruling class, the men 
who are directly in power are going to do things and enact certain laws or regulations when dealing with their own group, when dealing with their own women. And that is clear cut what you are currently seeing with the United States government. And again, I'm just stating this to a lot of people directly out there. In order for a group of people to, in a sense, affect negatively, harm or try to hinder black people, they will look on a chessboard and sacrifice their own pieces in order to get to that main goal. And that is clearly what you are seeing at this moment in time. The United States and those in the United States know the honest truth that white women are the main ones that are profiting from affirmative action. They know that affirmative action has made sure that white women have a some type of status of power. They have high paying jobs. They are in higher up positions versus where they would be if there were no affirmative action. And because you have a few of them directly up there, they've gotten to a point where they've said enough is enough. We got enough of you guys up there. So now we're going to cut off this whole thing here in order to make sure to stop to, to hinder, to put up some type of blockade in order to stop some type of uprise of other groups of people being able to also gain power, money, and those higher paying positions in a lot of these fields that they don't want those people to be in. So they are, for all intents and purposes, sacrificing some minor pieces in, in light of a bigger goal. And for other people out there to not really see what the full picture is, I don't know what to tell them because the writing is directly on the wall. If you are African-American, whatever you want to call yourself, and you completely think that this has to do 100 percent with you, you are sorely mistaken. You're not even a thought at this moment in time. All Again, all of the rulings that have transpired when it specifically deal with with women is only about one specific group of women. It ain't about everybody else, every other woman that's in the United States. It's about one specific group. So again, let me know what you guys think about uh, this information, everything that I stated uh, in this video in the comment description below. And as always, peace, love, and stay tuned for the next video.